All right, everyone, welcome back to episode 16 of Jux and All Things Sports Podcast, presented by Always Bullen. If you're listening to us on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, drop a like. Uh, and if you're on Spotify, leave a follow, drop a rating. Uh, before we jump into the pod right now, last week we were off for vacation, so sorry if you missed us. Uh, and then this week, we're coming to you, trains a little bit under the weather, but we're here. We're here to bring you the sports news, the playoff picture, heading into a big week 18. Uh, to start things off, Monday night football last night, if you were watching, very sticky situation, very touchy subject. The scariest part is it was an injury that happened on a play that wasn't like, whoa, he just got smoked or anything like that. Um DeMar Hamlin went down after making a tackle, spent eight to nine minutes getting CPR, uh, AED assistance, left the ambulance in the hospital, no thumbs up, no nothing. Very scary situation for players, coaches, and fans. NFL tried to restart the game, allegedly. I don't have sources to confirm that besides Twitter people. Um, Verified ones, good sources, but... NFL hasn't come out and said that, uh, but players and coaches said, yeah, not happening. Probably the right call. Very scary situation. So prayers up for him and his family. Prayers up to T. Higgins as well um, for being involved in the play that happened. I'm making a catch. Nothing he could have done differently. Freak accident. Um, but I'm sure I'm sure it's difficult for him to process too. But prayers up to DeMar and his family, both the Bills and the Bengals. If you're out there, don't worry about your fantasy football championships. Don't worry about the playoff picture for two teams who are obviously going to make the playoffs and going to be teams to beat. Uh, Worry about the safety and well-being of him and his family uh, and the mindsets of these players going into an important part of the season. Starting off on a rough note like that, we'll jump into Thursday night football. Cowboys beat the Titans. Pretty boring game. I don't have a lot. Titans seem to be resting guys uh, for the bigger game in week 18, which we will definitely touch on. Um, Derek Henry doesn't play. He was out doubtful. Josh Dobbs got the start. Josh Dobbs will get the start week 18 as well for the Titans. So I don't know if they're just still waiting and seeing on Malik, but at least he's not the answer for the season. Can I move on from this one, guys, or do you have anything major on the Titans-Cowboys game? I think you're the only one to talk about it. I, I think you got you got to play them next week, and uh, playoffs or playoffs or not, um, I think if they don't have their starters, uh, and Josh Dobbs is their starter, uh, you definitely have got to be feeling good. Definitely feeling something. Um, I wanted Dobbs over Malik Willis, but you almost kind of want that rookie brain out there instead of the guy who's been around, seen a few things. But end of the day. Dobbs, Willis against Trevor Lawrence, uh, a guy I've been praising for the second half of the season. Got to go with the talent. I think the Jags have a potential to win this weekend. We got the short week. Titans got a long preparation for the game, so we'll see. I don't want to get overconfident, but yes, Train, ultimately Dobbs playing uh, looks a little bit better for me. I was worried about the dual threat of Malik Willis. Tends to be something the Jags aren't great at handling. They beat Lamar earlier on in the season, so that worked out. But, yeah, we knew they were resting players. Jags fans were a little like, oh, come on, guys. We didn't rest any players against the Texans, um, so you're resting guys against the Cowboys. I don't know. But, but yeah, boring game, ultimately, altogether. Leads us into another boring game, but it was fun for me. Jaguars. 31-3 31 to 3 over the Texans. Uh it was a game that looked like we were just kind of taking it easy. Trevor Lawrence didn't shine by any means, but he didn't do anything to lose the game or make it close. Travis Etienne balled out finally. Saw some good plays from him. Uh defense was making plays. We looked sharp. Uh we looked sharp. We looked prepared. We had a good mindset. It's encouraging to see a game like that going into a playoff matchup rather than playing an ugly game against the Cowboys. In fact, the game that the Cowboys even played ugly and still managed to win, 
Uh, we looked good. We looked put together. And Dougie P looked like he went with the game plan of we're going to go in there, we're going to grab the win, and we're going to get out. Everyone's safe. No injuries. Consistent. Uh, so I was encouraged. It was a fun game. Texans stink. Do you think yeah. that? Do you think they go Bryce Young number one? Is that the pick for them? It's got to be a QB. There's no generational talent outside of the quarterback position this year. You know, there's a couple of good defensive players near the top of the board, but I think the season shown showed that team enough that Davis Mills just isn't the guy for the future. Do you think it's not Bryce Young? You said a quarterback. I'm curious. I mean, C.J. Stroud went nuclear against the best defensive team in the nation at the collegiate level. That's fair. That's, yeah. And Try. Bryce Young didn't bring his team to the playoff. Yeah, yeah. Train. Do I do I think it's going to be Bryce Young that they pick? Yeah, sure. Do you yeah, think it'll yeah, be a quarterback, I, and do you think that quarterback will be Bryce Young? Well, I know Hammy made the uh, uh, the argument that they just drafted Davis Mills, and he was supposed to be the, the guy eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not. He, I mean, maybe the team isn't great around him. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with that. But um, you got to win. I think they only have two wins now. Yes. Um, and. Yep. and that's where it starts. It starts at the quarterback. You got to take a great guy, and hopefully he changes the whole the whole um, the whole dynamic at, in Houston. It, Davis Mills being the quarterback of the future. I mean, it's nice to have. Uh, I don't want to say luxury, but they took him in the third round. I think early on, it's a lot easier for a team to move on from a third round quarterback than when you take a guy like Zach Wilson at two, when all of a sudden you've got to talk about moving on from him after two seasons, it's an easier shift to make when Bryce Young, pop, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud pop up on your draft board when you've got David Mills you took in the third round. It's a lot less of a punch in the balls to make that pick rather than replacing yeah. someone you spent a first-round pick on. For sure. Speaking of struggling quarterbacks, my teaser pick, which hit, Squad teaser hit. The parlay teaser hit. Cardinals lose to the Falcons 19-20. to We didn't have the pod last week, but we did want to get the bets out for you guys. Uh, We figured that was easy enough. I snapped train, and I said, is Cardinals minus 12 and a half, plus 12 and a half, dumb? And he goes, well, Colt McCoy is not playing. I said, I know. I don't give a shit. I said, Desmond Ritter is playing, though. He's like, yeah, I mean, he's... it's like it's not a bad pick. Um, I didn't know why they were given given the Falcon or the Cardinals so many points in that game. I mean, I know we got six more on the tees, but Desmond Ritter's not good. I think that's David Blau. obvious right now. Um, and like Whoa. I was just saying, like I was just saying about Dobbs, give me the guy who's been around a bit, who's seen a couple locker rooms, uh, who at least knows how to play a football game. Not that Ritter doesn't; they won, uh, but I thought. Getting six on top of six and a half was way too much. I was right. I remained perfect on the season. 15-0. and 0, Going into the next week. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Not a lot on that game. Just wanted to talk about it because it was the teaser pick. Uh, two kind of gross teams. Cardinals are like whatever because they're on their quarterback three now. Um, but Falcons have a lot to do from here as well. Maybe Ritter's the guy. But we'll see if they move on from there. Bears Lions. I'm gonna let you handle this one. Train had to have been a fun game to watch. Forty-one to ten. Thoughts on the game? Jamison Williams finally getting touches. What are your thoughts on the team as a whole? And then I want to hear a little bit more about Jamison Williams' limited amount of touches early on and how that makes you feel. Well, we'll see him a lot more next year. I think right now we just had a half of a season without him. And we don't really know exactly or feel comfortable getting him fully involved. Um, Great take. Thank it, you. I mean, next, yeah, thank you. Um, next year, I think it'll be a lot different. You'll get, you'll see him um, at least early on in the season. We'll see how it goes. Um, he'll be getting the ball a lot more. And I don't know if you guys saw that play where he had that like end around uh, with with Goff. I, I think Hammy sent it. 
but Goff was just like keeping up with them, and I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but the the guy's really fast, and I, I don't want to compare him to Tyreek Hill because I think they're two completely different people. Oh. Waddle. Waddle. Yeah, sure. Or like, I I think he's gonna be great, and it's hard right now just because you see him not you not get the ball so much. Um, the game this week was great to watch. Normally, we're on the other side of it. Uh, we're normally the team scoring 10 points as opposed to 41. Um, the game started off pretty close, uh, but our defense really picked it up against a great Justin Fields. Um, we we have... Uh, he. Can you call uh, 7 a, of 21 for 75 yards great? He had 100 rushing yards in the first quarter. Um, but... Yeah, uh, then we shut him down. So, I mean, I think what I really took from this was our, our defense. Uh, Hutchinson, Houston are, are just going to be problems in the future, and I, I'm so happy about that. Um, our GM knows how to pick guys, and that's why I'm going to try to get involved. Like, this week, obviously everyone knows we need the Seahawks to lose against the Rams, and if they if they don't and the Seahawks win – Obviously, I still want to win. I, I, I it's the Packers. Yeah. I, I, I really, I still want to win. But you would get the, to play spoiler in that case for the Packers. So, right. Yeah. No right. matter what, you, but, you, the Lions have something to play for. Yeah. Either for their season or to kill Aaron Rodgers. The comparison was like the difference between the pick they would have if they won and if they didn't win was like a th- third round pick or equivalent to that. So I, it made me think a little, but no matter what, I want them to win. Um, I think it would end a, a great season, um, even though they wouldn't even make the playoffs in that situation. Um, after going one and six, I have to imagine, or I always think like, you know, what if we got like two or three wins instead of one? Uh, we're seven and two in our last nine ever since me and Nar went to the game with Ham. Um, and and uh, I... I think I heard somewhere that the Jags are the hottest team in football, but they're six and eight in their last, or they're six of eight in their last eight. And, uh, you know, the Lions f- killed them. Yeah. I, yeah, I was talking to Reen the other day about that because, um, Comp and I have our bet. I think it was in, I don't even know if it was after draft night, but it was way before the season. I t- I said Jags would have a better record. He said Lions 20 bucks. Uh, I haven't told Comp this, so if he's listening, he's going to hear it live. Uh, if we if they end with a tie record, I'm giving Comp the tiebreaker, obviously. So he'll get yeah. the 20 bucks if the records are tied because of that dominant win. They're both 8-8 eight eight right now? That is correct, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you have any more on the game train? Or? Um, no, not really. I, I, just, I just love, I mean, being 8-8, eight eight, uh, coming back from, from last year, um, towards the end of the season too was, was pretty good last year, but being eight and eight, I think I'm pretty content right now. I would love to end the season. You know, it, there's a chance we can make the playoffs, which is incredible. But the 49ers are at the two seed right now. They'd be at home. Um, you know, perfect world. We need Seahawks to lose. We need to win. We need the the Vikings to win. I think and the 49ers to lose and we would play against the Vikings at, at, in Minnesota, which I think is a much more winnable game. Um, no, you want San Fran. Really? What makes I you they think, have nine games in a row? What makes you say that? I think Brock Purdy, Mr. Relevant, you put him in a tough spot in the playoffs with two of the best new young rushers the league's seen this entire year against a playoff experienced quarterback. Against Super Jared Goff, Bowl. Super Bowl familiar, experience quarterback, who's familiar with that division and that team, I don't think it's a big bad 49ers Everybody's thinking of. I, I, I get it. Minnesota won better. A lot of the game. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so you'd rather? Okay, the 49ers aren't as scary as what I made them sound to be. Y- yes. Fair enough. I'm betting whoever plays the 49ers first round spread. Really? Does not matter. Money in the Don't bank? Matter. Even if it's Probably. the backers. <laughs> oh, Aaron Rodgers loses to the 49ers every he, year. I thought he playoffs. only loses at, at home against them, though. He's going back to the Bay, which is where he's from. Big Bay we'll guy. Get, 
That's neither here nor there. Uh, we'll talk about that in a week and uh, when we actually get to the playoff scenarios. Let me throw something in your guys' brain, though. All right, I'll take it. Take a, this might take a little bit of time, so I apologize if we run long. We'll keep it under an hour. We'll just trim. For the perfect world, for the boys to have a weekend this upcoming weekend, the Jets had to beat the Seahawks. For the Steelers' sake. Uh, well, now, right now they had to, if the Seahawks won yes, yesterday or Sunday, Steelers are out. Oh, you're toast. No, would have been toast. I'm oh. Now oh, okay. 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 I might've said that backwards. Um, you might've, but I'm here now. I, I cooked up something on the sports book app. Jags, dub. Lions, dub. Steelers, dub. Jets dub against the Dolphins. Rams dub. Who plays the Patriots? Don't you need them to lose? Bills, but they're not on the sports book, obviously, <laughs> with what's yeah, going on. Yeah. But those five legs alone, plus 4,200. Oh, my God. <laughs> imagine, imagine that. I will say the last squad ride we did was ruined. By only the Steelers. On and, Sunday night. And the Packers had a bye. And I was laughing to myself the other day because there is a world where everyone's teams can make the playoffs. Except no. for the Lions fans <laughs> and <laughs> Steed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I, in terms of group happiness, um, Lions win, Seahawks lose. We only have Jags win, Dolphins lose, Patriots lose. Everyone in the group chat's happy except for one person, and that's Steed, and I think that's a price we'd be willing to pay. And Kang is a sad. Yeah, I was going to say. Well, well, he's got like six teams he roots for. Yeah, that's true. I will say I've already bet it, and I put a whole unit on it. Love it. I'll be back in that with you. Another thing I want to touch on since Train brought up draft picks with the Lions, and we don't have a formal outline today, so we're kind of winging it. Anyways... Coming off of a draft with what Brad Holmes just did and getting a Mon round the fourth round earlier, I was telling Reen the other day, I said, those are the GMs you need. You, any, anyone can make a first round pick. Anyone can bust in the first round too. I mean, there's been plenty of sure things where like you can be the smartest GM in the world and everyone's like, no, you take this guy and you take him and he doesn't work out. It happens. Where drafts matter is those fourth to seven rounds. Those guys you can get who they don't, you know, I mean, in the Lions case, Amon Ra impacted almost immediately, pretty much immediately, and in his second year. Houston, almost immediate impact. Those are outliers. But to get guys in the fourth to seventh rounds who can stay on the team, be depth, be starters in three to four years, that's how you have a good draft, and that's what Brad Holmes is doing. So a word to the Lions fan, and I know it's tough. I've been there with you guys. I used to be there. The time for rooting for low draft picks is over. You have a competent GM. You root for a good season. The Rams won, sure. You can root for that to go as low as you want. When it's not yours, yup. Get down, get down. But, but now, not this. No, when it, yeah, well, when it's your pick, trust your GM now. You've got a guy who can make picks wherever in the draft you know even once you get out of the top 10 a lot of teams are drafting at need at that point not necessarily best available so root for a good season even if the Seahawks win root to beat the Packers that's your rival spoil their playoff chances I don't care how many picks it falls you back Holmes will get the right guy for you I also don't want to leave this game without bringing up Justin Fields I've I've been snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap with this guy. Beginning of the season, I hated him, couldn't stand him. We were on Ohio State can't develop quarterbacks territory. A guy who spent a lot of time in Georgia. Then, after listening to Ryan Fitzmagic on TV talk about him being misused, I was like, you know what, that actually makes a lot of sense. Maybe he does still have talents. And I came on here and voiced that opinion, piggybacking off of Matt Fitz, or Fitzmagic. 
then he started playing good. And everyone's like, wow, Justin Fields is really great. But I'm seeing way too much Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence debate. Yes, Justin Fields can run the ball. Might be the best running quarterback in the NFL. Lamar still has a conversation on that, but he's been injured. And Lamar is definitely the shiftiest. Justin Fields has downfield speed. He's making the reads. But I don't know how you can come off of a 7 for 21 game with 75 passing yards against a Lions secondary that has been iffy most of the season on a good team. You can't tell me you love this secondary train. 7 of 21, and you're telling me this guy is better than Trevor Lawrence? Now not, or later? I'm not going to say that, but... Who's he throwing it to compared to Trevor Lawrence? Who's Trevor Lawrence throwing it to? Are you saying oh, that Trevor Lawrence has worse wide receivers than no, Justin? No, no, but I'm not saying it's that big of a difference. Bark, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure about four weeks ago you made the argument that your three wide receivers are better than the Lions. Uh, no, I, I quickly backed away from that when I was talking it out. I, I went okay. to start doing the comparisons, then I got about three down. I'm like, oh, yeah, the – no, the, I mean, okay. Christian Kirk, I love Evan Ingram. I love Evan Ingram. He's balling out lately. Christian Kirk is good, solid. He's got a high price tag on him. I don't know how many people would take him over Darnell Mooney. That's blasphemous. Really? Is it? Okay. I think, I think That's blasphemous. Would. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You let Trevor Lawrence throw the ball to Darnell Mooney. We'll you- see what happens. But, I mean, then you get down to Zay Jones, Marvin Jones Jr. This isn't like other receiver rooms in the league. And I'm not saying this. It's not like Justin Fields has Jay Jettas, Adam Thielen, and TJ Hawkinson out there like the Vikings or a Bills receiver core or a Chargers receiver core. But if you're good, you don't have a 33% completion percentage. I don't care who your receivers are because these are NFL receivers. Whether they're the worst in the league or not, they made the league. 33%? Bad. But... 7 of 21 doesn't sound bad, but when you put that percentage by it, Trevor Lawrence has been 69.7% since week 9 with the highest passer rating in the NFL. And we're going to talk about a guy who's got a 33% completion percentage. Give me a break. Get out of town. Broncos, Chiefs. <laughs> Russ starting to cook a little bit. Broncos have been rumored to have reached out to Harbaugh. The cycle continues. He said he wasn't going to leave. He said he'd be back in 2023. Now season ends. Oh, no. If an NFL team comes calling, there he goes. Uh, Broncos were one of the teams to reach out. Russell's teammates backed him up. He's looked better in the last couple weeks. Two rushing touchdowns, I think. Is Russ salvageable? Are the Broncos still a team where if you're a head coach that a lot of teams want, are they at the top of your list for teams looking for a coach? Train. I think their defense is incredible. Um, And before last season where Russ was pretty injured and kind of not playing as much and he came back too soon or whatever, um, he, he was playing pretty good. Um, Nathaniel Hackett was a new coach in Denver. Um, but I don't know if I can truly say if Russ is salvageable. I think he's getting old. And if he's playing this bad now, I don't know if he's going to be playing any better uh, soon, regardless of what coach uh, he gets. If Harbaugh goes there, uh, I don't know if he's going to make Russ that much better. Um, but he's got just incredible wide receivers. So I. I don't see what the issue is. Um, I mean, Javante Williams would be huge. I know that always helps having a great running back back there, but I think it's, you know, I don't think it's really salvageable right now. Latavius has been serviceable. Yes, and he's still not doing that great. I mean, close game, but uh, I don't think it's salvageable. I think Nathaniel Hackett was probably a bigger reason than we thought at the beginning of the season that they, <laughs> they're losing these games. Um, but Russ definitely has his reasoning for being the having having this this bad of a record nar uh i don't think this is a matter of whether or not it's salvageable and i'm gonna do my best to put this into perspective because they got him for six years now or something 
you're the best way that I can make an analogy out of this, the way that I see it. You're a 35 year old person, man, woman, doesn't matter. You live alone and you have a very low paying job. Is he 35? No. Oh, age doesn't matter. Sorry. It's a completely different analogy. And you drive an absolute beater out of a car. I mean, it's leaking oil like no tomorrow. All the brake pads are rubbing out. You don't have an option. All your money is into that car, and all their money is into that human being. They have to use it. He's 34, by the way. Yeah, you were damn close with 35. Damn. (laughs) (laughs) No, that makes sense, Nar. Um, What are they going to do? Might as well get a different coach to try to help them, right? Yeah, yeah, are are they going to be stuck on a treadmill now though? Because it's like, well, we got Ross, you know, and they have to. Is or well, is there a world where Ross can take? Like, is, is Ross done, or is there a world where he can still figure it out and be a? Uh, even if he's not the reason they make the playoffs or make a Super Bowl, can he be that Joe Flacco, Matt Hasselbeck, Trent Dilfer that can be a quarterback on a Super Bowl team? I think he can, but he's in the wrong division for it. Oh. Hundred percent, and maybe conference. I mean, yeah. Because I think coaching can be huge, and I know I know Train brought up age, and thirty-four is a lot different uh, than a rookie. But after seeing firsthand what a coach did to an entire locker room of players, both in the Matt Patricia era for the Lions, shattered the entire spirit of a locker room. And the Urban Meyer stint in Jacksonville that shattered the entire spirit of... Not that that team had a lot of spirit right then. But we just got Trevor Lawrence. We were so excited. And it was bad. And, again, I know that age is a huge thing here. But the turnaround Trev had was ridiculous after almost just a coaching change. Uh, A lot of the draft was defensive. And they did spend a lot more money in free agency. But... I think he had like 14 tubs and 17 picks last year with Urban Meyer at coach. Does I this make you – Does this is this you saying that a coach could help Russ? I think if you get the right coach in there, we're going to see vintage Russell Wilson. Maybe not vintage, maybe not prime, but I think we can – I think there's a world where a good Russell Wilson can come out of Denver still. A good, w- not great. Like playoffs, what, what are we – What, what do you playoffs. consider great? I'm, I'm saying, like, I think there's, have, I think there's a world where Russell Wilson can end the season in the top ten quarterbacks. Oh, okay. I think there's I a world where that happens. He has the talent. The odds I, of it I, happening, I don't know, I don't know, but I, I think he can still make plays. I think it's huge that his teammates are still standing up for him. You know, it's not a like, oh, get a load of this guy. He's got his paycheck in his office in his parking spot. People keep trying to rip him, and Broncos players aren't having it. Uh, and I think that speaks a lot. That means Russell's not satisfied with what he's doing, because his, you know, the teammates know if if Russell was in the locker room every night going, uh, well, fuck it, I got my guaranteed contract, the players wouldn't be so quick to back him up. He probably knows he's doing bad. He's probably working hard to do it. That being said, don't buy into the Chiefs game too much. They don't know how to cover. They can't cover football games. Patriots barely squeak one out against the Dolphins. No Tua, whatever. Skylar Thompson, but good for the Stillers. Uh, good for the Jags if we happen to lose to the Titans. But we don't want that to happen because then we'd have to be rooting for a Steelers loss. Which I won't be because we're going to beat the Titans. Is Teddy Bridgewater always hurt? Yeah, that's just what he... I, I mean, hope so. Like... Always. Didn't that guy shred something on the Vikings? ACL, right? No, he, that and he got knocked the fuck out. Yeah, after yeah. the ACL, right? Or before. It's always yeah. hurt. Yeah. Like, he's... Whatever it might be, he, I, it's always something new, and i I never surprised when he's on the sideline and, and his backup's in. Yeah, I mean, your goal is just to get two good quarters out of Teddy and hope that's enough to hold on for the second half. But it wasn't. It wasn't. Skylar Thompson couldn't finish it. Giants bring the hammer down on the Colts, 38-10. to 10. Not a surprise. Colts look stinky. Jeff Saturday probably won't return as the coach. More than likely will not return as the coach. Brian Dable, coach of the year candidate, yes or no. Train. 
Does he have a, does he have a strong case for coach of the year over Dan Campbell? That's what I want to hear from a Lions fan. Pretty close. Um, top five for sure. Um, I'd say top because I'd say I think top it's just four because of this roster. Who is on this team other than Saquon? Uh, that's huge on offense. I mean, Dan Jones had. It, that was going to be my answer. Oh yeah, is he the guy? He's he's always was the guy, dude. Is he? Is he? Is this? <laughs> he never is, wasn't. Is, he never wasn't the guy. Is the Giants with Dayball and Dan Jones something that could be fixed with Russell Wilson and a new coach in Denver? Could that could that flip like that? Build around Danny Dims. I think I think. To answer your question, yes, he's a candidate. I don't think he'll win. Uh, I think. Really? Think, well, I don't know. I think Sirianni mm. before they before they lost these two, last two games was. The yeah, favorite. but if you're a good coach with that team, you got to squeak one out with Minshew. You have to. So, so I think he's still up there. I I don't even here. Why don't you get? Why don't you give your take, Nar? And uh, I'm gonna look at the uh, coach of the year odds. And... Well, what's the question, Bach? Is Dabble your front runner for coach of the year? Most would when Trey looks up the odds, I'm willing to bet it's Dable number one. I think it's gotta be him, Dan Campbell. Him or Dan Campbell have to You're be missing there. one. You really Doug? want the Jags? Doug? You want Doug? Number one overall pick in the draft two years in a row. Potentially wins the division this year. I don't know what to tell At you. Nine and eight. At nine and eight. So you're gonna put Dan Campbell above him, who's also nine and eight in second place. Like he was one and six. Okay, yeah. So you're gonna reward him for having a worse start to the season. Like they'd have identical you, records. You got a valid point, Doc. That's what I'm saying. Like Dougie P came into a mess that was Urban Meyer had the number one pick in the draft, turned it all around, and now and might win the year. division. All three of oh. these coaches have very similar records. I, I got it that, up. I got it up. That's here. That's a good point. That's a good point, Doc. Sirianni is the favorite. So. Oh, give me a break. Get him out of town. <laughs> I could Shanahan. coach the Eagles to 12 wins. Kyle Shanahan is in second. I'm assuming just with the injuries, uh, quarterback, and still doing what they're doing. Same thing. Know. Give me the Niners team. I'll get them to 12 wins. Dayball, number three. There we go. Dougie P, number four. Yep. Zach Taylor, number five, oh, and Dan Campbell, what? number six. Give me Dan Campbell at five. and Get Zach Sirianni Taylor. at I, my he three Super Bowl. are Dougie P, DC, and Dable. I don't think it's a conversation outside of that. The yeah, other three guys. Credit great teams that are, that are playing really well, I think. Uh, I think that's just why Kyle Shanahan's that far up there, just yeah. because of. I mean, they're the two seed. But he's been honest. doing it. He's been doing it. I just think, I think we're overlooking what what's going on over there. I think we're underlooking. I'm not fooled by it. They're losing <laughs> first round of the playoffs. Yeah, Nar knows. Nar knows. Cal coach Shanahan ain't shit, dude. In the playoffs. I know. Coach of the I year. Know. Well, then the coach of the year is losing the first round of the playoffs. I, I think Mark my words. We'll talk about that after he loses. It takes I'm a good coach right now. To dig Tweeted. a team up from the trenches. People were out on the Giants. They hated them. They still, I mean, the Giants roster is not great. Uh, the Lions, awful start. Second round, second overall pick in the draft. It is Dan Campbell's second year, but tough franchise to turn around in one season. Uh, and then you got Doug Morrow, or Dougie P, Doug Peterson. Oh, I, I know. That's an old man. That gave me flashbacks. <laughs> hey, he took us to the playoffs in his first season, though. <laughs> Um, How'd that turn out? We should have been in the Super Bowl. Don't get me started on the 2017 <laughs> AFC Championship game. Uh, for three hours. He wasn't down. He wasn't down. You let the play run out, then you go back and review it. But whatever. This guy who had the number one overall pick in the draft, you know, Trayvon Walker, and now you're talking about winning a division title? I don't care about the record of 9-8. and eight. That's a division title. That's a number four seed in the playoffs. That's a four seed in the playoffs. I don't care if you're nine and eight. You're playing the Chargers at home. So, if they lose, if they lose, how far, I'm, how, far, how far does that bring them down? 
is out. You gotta win the division. You gotta make the playoffs. Okay, so his coach of the year, ta- your coach of the year take for Dougie P relies on a win this week. Yeah, but I'm okay with Dable winning it over Dougie P, even if he does win this week. I think Dable's done really good. Um, I won't be upset if Dan Campbell wins it. I would put him in the same boat as Dougie P, though. I think they both have to make the playoffs for them to even be considered. Um, I, for me, it'd be Dable, Doug Peterson, Dan Campbell. Anybody outside of those three have a good team, have done this before, and don't, they don't need it. They'll get other awards. It's, it's just more Come on. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Nick Sirianni, like, give me a break. They're the top three picks in last year's draft. Are yeah. they not? Jags? Yeah. Jags, Giants, and Lions? Or Jags, Lions, Giants? I don't know where the Giants were drafting. I think it went Trayvon Walker, yep. Aiden, yep. Thibodeau. Yeah. Thibodeau went three? I think so. Pretty sure. Did Sauce not go three? Four. Sauce right. went four. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I, but yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. But, yeah, those are my top three. Um, I mean, you want to talk Nick Sirianni. Eagles drop one to the Saints 20-10. to 10. I don't care who your backup quarterback is. I don't care where your team's at. The Saints, come on. Get Nick Sirianni out of here. Not well. He's a good coach. Get him out of the coach of the year ratings. Buccaneers beat the Panthers. Tom Brady's looking kind of back. Um, Mike Evans, kind of back. I think Nar was onto something when he said, or I might have been Train about we're gonna have to see Tom Brady in the playoffs, and then it's like, oh, Tom Brady in the playoffs. They might win a game. They might win two. Who knows? Three. But apparently he's putting weight back on, from what I heard. Uh, so Probably I guess should. I guess he was really stressed out earlier on, understandably so. I'd be stressed if my supermodel wife wanted a divorce. I don't know who <laughs> wanted the divorce, but I'd be stressed either way. Because even if I was like, hey, supermodel wife, I want a divorce, I'd probably be in bed like, what did I just say? Did I ask for that? <laughs> what am I do-? So I get it. I get it. Uh, but we might not have seen the end of Tom Brady yet. Browns beat the Commanders, another eh game, but important for playoff scenarios. Am I right, boys? Huge for us. Okay. Huge for the Lions. Because yeah. I've checked out a bit because when Jags, you know, Jags are winning in mode, so it's like, but I, I was pretty sure you guys needed the Commanders loss. Uh, so that's big. Play. You are the Browns? Yep. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why they put Carson Wentz back in. We knew we knew the Henneke magic would run out eventually. One of you guys said it, but was that why you picked the the Browns because of Wentz? I picked it because I believe in the Lions making the playoffs. Love it. Oh, love it. Okay, I'll take that. Wentz Wentz didn't hurt though. Wentz, he needs. He's he, so bad. I don't know if he's too young to retire, but. He needs to just find someone who will pay him a couple hundred thousand to sit as a backup somewhere and just start investing, dude. He's set. I mean, he's made his nut. Just just coast, dude. Just coast and get smart with your money right now. You're, you'll be fine. You, you're living the dream. I don't care how bad your career was. Uh, your team went to a Super Bowl. You got injured that season. Oops. But so yeah, what, dude? Ring. Yeah. You spent yeah, – You spent – your childhood life and then 10 to 15 years of your adult life playing football you made your money just just call it dude don't push it any further you're a vegan yeah. already you can't go much lower than that apologies shout if that joe. offends anyone shout out vegan joe joe Ohio. 49ers beat the raiders in an exciting <laughs> overtime game Train, you would have liked the Raiders to win. Am I correct or no? Nah, it really doesn't matter. Um, to be honest, I, I I had them in a huge parlay, uh, the Raiders. So it would have been kind of cool. Just another uh, tick for that parlay. But I think they're playing a lot better now um, with the Raiders. The, yes, the, the end of the season. Um, Devontae Adams is surely like – 
showing up now. I think. What? Who? Who started this? Did him? Yes, sir. Did Carr get benched? Yes, sir. Yep. He's getting traded. Rumors are rumors are to the Colts. Colts. Yep. Right. If Stidham starts next year and Carr does go well, to the, well, you're forgetting about somebody. They have Trey Lance on their team. Trey Lance is on the 49ers. Trey Lance is playing. Oh fuck! My bad. My bad. Sorry. All right. Sorry. It's okay. If, if Stidham starts next year and <laughs> Derek Carr goes to the Colts, I uh, did. Stidham, sorry, Trey. Sorry, does, go ahead. Does Stidham have? a better record than Derek Carr does. You know, granted, Devontae Adams stays, and, you know, he had all of the weapons stay. I mean, no. Darren Waller finally got a touchdown. No. Is that a, it's, it's a worse record? I think Derek Carr is still very good. I don't think he's it's been the – 49ers the, defense. I don't think Derek Carr has been the problem. What's the problem? Uh, defense – look at, look at Jared Goff through the Lions 1-6 – start um a lot of Lions fans were ready to move on from golf because Lamar. that's what you think of when your team's losing oh my god our quarterback can't win games it was painfully obvious that the Lions defense was losing those games and at a certain point as a quarterback you go out there after your however many touchdown drives and you go well what the fuck am I doing out here they're just going to go give up another touchdown. Well, fuck it. I'll just give it back to them. I'm out. I'm going to go sit down. I don't think so Derek, Derek Carr's Carr is the... He's going to save the Colts. He's going to be a steal for whatever team gets him. And I'll back Nar up on the Trey Lance take a bit. I saw some rumors of him going to the 49ers. And I was like, what? They got Trey Lance. What are they doing? So I'm Derek Carr going there? Yeah, I saw some rumors. and that's So I'll back you up on thinking we were talking about the Niners there for a second. How many quarterbacks? But well, good thing they're on number three right now. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think Carr's the problem. I think he'll be good wherever he is. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know which team's got the better weapons between the Raiders, uh, and the Colts. Raiders. Raiders offense easily. I don't know enough about uh, either team's defenses to really know. But full team, full team wise, it's definitely closer. Yeah, I that's. Think it's been yeah, well, because offense, I mean, I can think of Josh Jacobs, Darren Waller, Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, Matt Collins. I don't know much about either of those teams' O-lines, but Raiders got good playmaking weapons. Uh, and So I, I, don't know, I don't know much about the Colts either. All I know is the Colts are super bad. AFC South for the taken. But I don't know. I don't want, I don't want Derek Carr in the AFC South because he's scary. So hopefully he goes somewhere else. But I think he'll be a good quarterback wherever he goes. Seahawks, trounce on the Jets. Um, that Mike White magic was also bound to run out eventually. Happened last time, last year, whenever time Mike White was in. Uh, it's just, you know, great start. Okay, second game. So on, so forth. Jets will figure it out eventually. Packers dominate the Vikings. Aaron Rodgers looking like Aaron Rodgers again. Probably a little scary for Lions fans coming into a big week, but the Lions have looked good, so don't worry about it. Chargers beat the Rams 31-10. Maybe the Baker magic running out a little bit. And then, Nar, it's all you for the Steelers. Yeah, I mean. Fun, fun game. You say unfun or fun fun? Fun fun. Okay. Just want to make yeah, sense. I well sixteen thirteen doesn't look fun, but it was a fun game. It was Classic a Steelers. Game. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, when you're a Steelers fan and your quarterback, I'm out of focus again. Stat line, all that other shit. He's hasn't had the best rookie season you could have asked for. But you have him go into a. Sunday night prime time under the lights against a ten and five Ravens team. Nevertheless, a tough, stingy defense. You need to win to keep your playoff hopes alive. And he puts up a game where he didn't make many mistakes, in a drive at the end of the game, very similar to last week, 
where he puts it all together as a ball and string and makes incredible throws to keep the drive alive. Kenny Pickett's the guy. Love to hear that. Who you are. Love to hear it. I don't care what team you are. I don't think I don't, I don't give a shit about your opinions. The Steelers are fucking coming. They're not here to bow down to the fucking Browns. The Dolphins are playing. What's that fucking guy's name? Skylar Thompson. Skylar. Dolphins have to trust in Skylar Thompson. Jets' well. defense is going to eat him up. Patriots are playing a Bills team. Steelers are coming. Bengals. I want them. Two seed. I love it. I love it. It it started off the year pretty good. Did you not? Did you beat them? I think game one. Yeah. Yeah. It was like four picks by Joe Burrow. I would we want them too. The, we beat the Bengals week one and then an absolute shootout when they came to Pittsburgh and then they lost by three or six a couple weeks ago. Mike, Tom, Mike Tomlin does not finish under 500. Yeah. He doesn't do it. Yeah, it's not happening. I'm telling you that right now. Nar, what are we doing if the Jags and the Steelers play each other in the playoffs? Uh, probably fighting at some point. I'm not sure. We're not going to the game? Jacksonville. I, I, I'd go to the game. I'd go to the game. We're gonna Jacksonville's go. probably the four seed, right? And the best is the Steelers getting a seven. So it'd be the AFC Championship. Yeah, most likely. Have some... No, it... most likely. It would have to be. It'd yeah. Have to be. We There's could... no world where they play before the AFC Championship. We could go to the AFC Championship together in Jayville. I'd go. No doubt about it. We might fight. Well, I'm not really a fighter, but you might try to fight <laughs> me multiple times. Now I'd... I would fight a lot of other people there. Yeah, it'd be a bad. The bad day for Jacksonville. But I, this team, man, they're just fucking coming together and getting hot at the perfect time. Najee Harris has had an incredible second half for this season, and their defense is playing lights out. TJ Watt's back. He's healthy. He's getting attention every snap, and that frees up guys like Cam Hayward and Alex Highsmith to make plays on the quarterback and create pressure. Najee rebound is great to see. Kenny Pickett being the guy. I love to hear that from a fan. Because rookie rookie quarterbacks are fun. No matter what round you draft them in. I mean, I'm sure there's 49ers fans out there going, man, Brock Purdy's the guy. And that's awesome. Like, I, I want people to have fun with rookie quarterbacks. You know, it's not the same when your eight-year veteran backup comes in and wins you a game. You're like, all right, good win from the backup. When the rookie comes in, you're like, oh, yeah, he's – we can trade him for a first round draft pick, but you know it's. So I'm glad that you love him. I'm glad that he seems to be there to stay. Week no, eight, not going anywhere. week eighteen not should fighting. be a fun one. A lot of playoff scenarios. Oh, fired up, dude. Maybe we tweet out the squad rides separately just to keep track for you guys what the pod needs to be happy. But ultimately, Jags win, Lions win, Seahawks loss, Dolphins loss, Patriots loss, Steelers win. <laughs> And we're good to go. It sounds like plus, a lot. It sounds like a lot. But it's doable. It's doable. Plus 4,200. We'll move on from exciting news to saddening news. We talked about the departure of Harbaugh. Nars dancing. It's really pissing me off right now. <laughs> because we beat your ass. We made the playoffs two years in a row. And it was oh. frustrating. It was. It was frustrating. Back-to-back Big Ten championships. Back-to-back wins over Ohio State. Can't I'd say be, about Michigan State. I can't say that about Michigan State. It was heartbreaking, and there was a part of me that was just, you know, you know everyone was confident. We were favored. It's I easy to say, oh, oh, I saw it coming. No, not, no, I didn't. I thought we were going to win. I was confident. I was, but you know, you've always, whenever you're the favorites, the big favorites, and everyone's going Michigan, 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 or whatever team you root for. You know, you see it all the time on the football games when all the analysts pick the same teams to win. Everyone goes, oh no. Uh, I think people picked TCU. It wasn't necessarily as unanimous. Dugan's a good quarterback, but it's sad, Train. It's, it, it's tough. Um, it took us a while to get over that hump of, winning the Big Ten, beating Ohio State. Um, 
We still haven't consistently beat Michigan State. They've been a bump in the road the last couple of years. Even when our teams are – even the, when we beat Ohio State last year and won the Big Ten Championship, we didn't have that win over MSU. But it was sad. I'm disheartened. I don't think Harbaugh is going anywhere, but he might. Uh, coaches have lied before. I wish he would come out just like – Whenever these things happen, I wish you'd just come out and be like, no, it's bullshit. I'm here. Do it right away. And he never does, and that's why it's scary. That's what, He might be sitting in his office somewhere and be like, it's not what – like the team knows. I talked to the parents. I talk, He doesn't need the money, though. That's the thing. If you've got good job security, you live by your Still grandparents, talks. you're in your home state. I And maybe it's because I don't have a lot of money. But I always think to myself, man, if I was in these situations, I'd get my bag for show. Which he got it in the NFL, and he got it in his first contract in Michigan. He's still making five milli a year, dude. If I was, if I like, I, I just want my team to be happy, and I want to be calm and relaxed. And I think going to the NFL is really stressful at this career point. I think it's a lot. I don't think he'll do it. I think he'll stay where he's at at least one more year. Might leave for the NFL next year though. He finally has a quarterback that's like good, and he's returning a lot of guys. I don't think he's gone on to train. Well, I'll talk about the game um, and, and kind of steer away because I, I kind of I agree with you on Harbaugh. I, I think if he does leave, uh, I'll be, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I wouldn't know why. But anyway, the game. I'd wish um, him well. I'd wish him well right. and hope him success in the NFL. I, do, you, well, do you want him to stay? To be clear, I'd like for him to stay. Yes, but if he leaves, yeah, right. I'm not going to be oh. mad. Well, okay. I mean, I'll be just, sad, just, but I won't be mad. It's a sad um, day. It's a bad. Day. So, I took TCU plus three first quarter, um, lock. I hit a big parlay, uh, that seemed really easy, um, but it didn't really matter, um. And maybe I get maybe I get some hate for this, but after the whole game, I still think that Michigan was by far the better team, and mistakes were made by our young quarterback, especially early in the game. Um, I think for sure, and even if you don't want to agree with me on this, there's a blown call at the beginning of the game, but the fact that we didn't score that touchdown and we were on the goal line, we can't fumble it on the goal line. So, yes, yes, it would. I agree been. with both of those as a Michigan hater. Refs fucked up, but you fucked up bigger. You, if you're a good team, you overcome bad calls. So two pick sixes. I think they had a, like a, a kick return. Maybe not. Maybe that was in the other game. I don't know. Uh, there was yeah. a lot of points, and it was kind of on JJ. And I don't know if we get there without JJ. So everyone's saying uh, we went with the wrong quarterback. I don't think our other quarterback would have got us that far. So... I think that game would have looked very similar to the Georgia game if Shea Patterson was playing. Exactly. We wouldn't have TCU the... would have scored a lot of points and we probably would have had like twenty one points. This was the first time I've ever muted uh Bull and Chat ever. Um <laughs> Nar, I, I I just can't believe not well, you know, I don't understand the whole Michigan thing, but like so much hate for them, but then you go around and root for Ohio State. I mean, obviously. On the record, record, Dave Portnoy, Michigan fan, was rooting for Ohio State. I'd like to say that to defend NAR a little bit. People want the Big Ten to succeed because we're sick of seeing it be the SEC trophy. Part of the rumor is we had SEC refs repping our game. Suspicious? A little bit. Ohio State graduate um, also at, at center uh, for the refs. Um, but How do like, you guys uh, know these Things. Michigan Twitter. Um, They're very my, diligent. My mom, my mom told me about the, uh, the ref. Um, yeah. So I'm just really happy. I still have that Georgia ticket. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know if we should go to NAR on this one. I don't even know if I want to hear it. But we can. We won't. Uh, know, we won't. We're running know, low on I, time. He hit a parlay. Um, I didn't discuss mine. That's not on this know. game. Oh. Oh, okay. You got, Let me tell Quick, quick, we're running low. I'm dead <laughs> ass. I'm dead no ass. One, no one's going to stop listening at an hour. I Yeah, I know, but it's you got consistency. This is well, what it's worked so far. 
train you hit the nail on the head michigan was primarily like they were the better team that night in my opinion besides three plays pick six pick six fumble on this one inch line not even the one yard line they it's qb sneak it well, why are you getting fancy give it to donovan play? edwards which too. brings me to the first possession of the game why are they running the philly special with one of the best run I games in i forgot in, about that in division one so frustrating there's four mistakes that cost you 28 points. Oh, for sure. 28 points. That's why. I, that's why I'm confident saying they were the better team. It, it was I 100 percent agree. They were the better team, but but they got into a style of game where they're just simply not comfortable. And frankly, they haven't been in in a year and a half, two years. They haven't been in a shootout like that in, from my memory, in a while. Well, Donovan Especially Edwards playing was from behind. Out. He was not getting the runs we usually see from a running back. Especially uh, at the goal t- line. T- yeah, TCU's defense actually did show up a lot a lot bigger than I thought they were going to. So, ha- uh, you know, credit where credit's due. Um, but J.J., he- he's young, and I-, I think he'll bounce back. There was that, that picture of him um, when the confetti was, uh, you know, going everywhere. The same thing as Stephon Diggs. Uh, every- everyone's, like, comparing it to, to that, but... Um, he found he found a camera. He found a camera. He's like, take a picture of me. Nil, baby, yeah. get that money. Get those photos out there. Like you He's wouldn't disgusting. be trying to find a camera. Hey, this would be sick. You should take a picture of me. That's what I'd be doing. Then. I'd want to be all cover of ESPN. I'd be slamming, I'd be slamming my helmet on the goalpost. Yeah, you probably would. Stare at, well, I, I would can, be watching confetti. You probably would. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'd probably be like. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on CFP? Great bowl games. Uh, so many to go over, but a lot Tammy of bowl. Got to Greek Town Casino around maybe mid third quarter of the Michigan game, and we, we were going bar crawling on the street. We're like, let's throw a ticket in for this Ohio State game. And before we know it, I think we ended with six or seven legs on this bad boy. And every single prop hit in the first half. And then we just needed Ohio State plus 10. Wow. Claps for NAR. Quick note. It was awesome. Awesome. NHL news. Jakob Vrana hits waivers today. Fresh off of the player assistance program. Very questionable move by Stevie Y. He carries $11 million in salary over the next two years with him. Very uncommon for teams to pick up a guy with that kind of salary cap hit. Four teams have the cap space to do it. Anaheim Ducks might be the only ones to pull the trigger. I don't think anyone will. Stay tuned tomorrow, 2 p.m., see if he clears. Really good goal scorer for the Red Wings. Can't afford to lose him. First Stevie Y move I've really been scared of in a while. Uh, Some old Tigers news because nothing's really been developing in the free agent market as expected. Uh, Michael Lorenzen signed with the Tigers. Fun guy to watch. It'll be fun. It'll be what it is. Uh, The Tigers are going to... Nar saw some balls today. Nar did see some balls addressed for Matt Boyd today, um, which is also fun. Apparently, Scott Harris really liked him because he was a Tiger, and then the Giants signed him last year where we took Scott Harris from. And then Scott Harris brought him back. I think Boyd pitched like 10 innings last year because of injuries. Um, and Harris says he's still got some stuff. So I'm excited. I'm excited for, well, I don't want to say I'm excited for Matt Boyd to be back because I'd be lying. I wish our premier hires weren't Matt Boyd and Michael Lorenzen. I will say it was very foggy at 6.45 a.m. this morning. And I didn't get time because I had a pretty busy day. But then I mentioned it two or three. And then I realized he was an actual Tiger. And now that you mentioned he played for San Fran last year, the return address was California. No so, way. That's, that's weird. Why no is way. that getting in? Is that where MLB makes balls? It's Cali? I didn't see a city exactly. Lord knows where the MLB makes their balls because they're scumbags. Um, Rob Manfred should be fired. Um, but the owners love him because he's an owner's commissioner. So well, it's supposed to be a player's commissioner, but he's an owner's commissioner. It should be a fun season. It, well, 
it's not going to be a fun season for casuals. It's actually, it's going to be really hard because it's not. I not, think it's just. I think you're just saying it's going to be bad, but you want it to be good. You, you're well, like you're not going to know names. The casual fan, it's not going to be, and it, you're not even going to know the guys you learned over the last three to four years. They're all gone. They kicked it. Matt Boyd's back. But look, uh, the Condelarios, the Castro guys, uh, Victor Reyes up in the air. Like it's all these na- all these mediocre names that we've been used to. They're not going to be there this year. It's going to be a lot of guys who've been in AAA, AA, or on the bench on other teams filling out our lineup this year, which is how a rebuild is supposed to go, and it's not how Alavila ran it. Um, so get ready to learn some new names or take about – a two-year vacation from being a Tigers fan and come back on the third year, uh, you'll be good to go. On to Deal. bets. <laughs> oh, NBA. Donovan Mitchell, 71 points, almost a triple-double. Kind of quietly last night, it almost seems like. Yeah, I saw someone, yeah. uh, you know, underdog fantasy, where he just, like, picked the little props, kind of. Yeah, it, he, took his, he took his under. It was, like, 20 years. Yeah, he had, like, <laughs> under points for LaMelo at 29 and a half, and then that one hit by – or under 30 and a half or something and hit by, like, two points. And then he had under Donovan Mitchell at 28 and a half, 71 points. The guy's like, are you kidding me? And I – I don't know. Gamble responsibly, I suppose. So on to – bet, yeah, and Pistons, uh, coaching change likely coming soon. Talent's getting there, and they're looking good. But Victor. It's just been – yeah, but the lottery scares me, dude. It's a tank for Victor, bro. You can be the worst team in the league by 10 games and still end up at, like, the eighth pick if you get fucked by the lottery. You got to tank for Victor. But we got to tank for Victor. But I wouldn't be shocked if Casey's not coaching next year. And if he is and we're not successful, it will be his last. Week 18 bets should be a big one. Do you guys have a teaser ready? If not, I'd like to ask your permission on a move. I'm going to go off of the ESPN because I have the games up in front of me. This isn't. I also do, ESPN. and I'm also okay. using ESPN. Okay. I'm using CBS. Okay. I don't have one yet. Okay. Um, Can I ask you guys permission then while you look? Can I permission? use yeah. our squad teaser as an emotional hedge? Our what? The squad no. teaser. No, no, it's hitting. Uh, what, whatever you, gi- whatever you give us, is is have- I don't I don't care why. It just give me the Titans well, the- plus twelve and a half. Plus. Holy no. God. Jacksonville's minus six and a half. Isn't that yeah, scary, dude? Good. Isn't that scary? It's, Josh- it's Joshua Dobbs. The Jags have been playing. I can't do it. I'm not betting against the Jags. Who am I? Give me. <laughs> No, I'm not ready. I, I have mine. All right, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. It, and I think this um, is way too easy of a pick, and I can't believe you guys haven't seen it yet. First game of the weekend, Chiefs Raiders. Give me the Chiefs down to one and a half. Yeah, that's fair because they probably won't cover, but they should win, huh? they never never (laughs) cover if you can bet on them winning between one and six points it's a lock this week all right all right trying what do you got wait a second am i am i missing something here (laughs) why are the falcon why are the falcons favorites over the buccaneers why probably gonna Uh, the, the Bucks have nothing to win. Yeah, are they resting? Are they resting people for plus? They can't get a. They can't get a better. Seat can't go can't up. Can't go win. down. Correct. Thank you. That's why I asked if I was missing something. They have the four seed in the playoffs locked up. Oh, it's a tough slate. It's a tough slate. Jets, Jets and Dolphins is down to a pick 'em, boys. Yeah, I know. No. I, I looked at it. I looked at it. I wanted to take the Jets for the Steelers' sake, but I can't. I can't. It's got to have a chance. Got to have a chance. Um, what are the Chargers playing for? This is a tough oh. week to bet. They're already in the playoffs and they can't win their division. God so damn. Maybe just a wild card. Bump. Five or six seed is what they're playing for. Who's the um, six seed? Ravens are 10 and 5. Fuck it, dude. Turn. Give me the Giants plus 20. I think that's ridiculous. Wait, they're, <laughs> they're probably not playing for anything, right? 
Are they Chargers locked? Are They're locked in. The Giants are locked in at their spot. God Chargers damn. Chargers are playing for something. 20 they points? They have the same record as the Ravens. 20? That's so many. I feel like... All right, I'll, I'll go. Go, Trent. I'm dying over here. I'm dying. This is a huge, huge week for the NFC. Uh, you know, like the the Cowboys and the Eagles. Um, which I think they... The Eagles play the Giants and the Cowboys play the Commanders. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it ends up if, like, one of them wins, mm -hmm. but I know the Cowboys want to win mm -hmm. to get the one seed in the NFC. Mm -hmm. uh, I think five and a half against a Commanders who don't care anymore is incredible, mm -hmm. and they're going to be – Cowboys are going to be playing for their life. Give me Dallas plus .5. Plus one and a half, yeah. They're at minus five and a half. Does the late season collapse the Cowboys always have? Always have? Scary. No. 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 Okay. okay. They, they I collapsed. Wanted, no. I, I wanted to throw it out there. That's fair, though. It always happens. Boys. I don't know if I'm tweaking because I'm 15 and 0. Or because, like, there's so many games which just like, are they even going to play because they don't have to? You're saying the Chargers do have something to play for? They have the same record as the Ravens? Yeah, yes, both they are. Six. Yes. They either play the the Jags or, or the Chiefs, Bengals, or Bills. Yes. <laughs> or do you want that fucking five seed? No offense. No offense, fuck. <laughs> You don't want to come to Jacksonville right now. You don't want to come to Duval. Well, you Why didn't you just take the Jags? Not where I'd want to be. It's not where I'd want to be. Um, take the Jags and take them down to a point five. No, I'm way Jackson. too scared to do that. Um, <laughs> give me the Rams plus 12 and a half. Yes. I think that's a the lot Lions. of points for the Seahawks to cover. Um I think it'll. I think. It, I was gonna ask you that earlier. I think that's insane. I understand like what's happening. It's eligible. I know, eligible. but they're not gonna. You put a guy on the IR. You don't bring him back week eighteen for a personal vendetta or to play spoiler for the Seahawks. Um, the one thing I, I will. I got because one. you don't risk that for a game that does not matter for your franchise. No coach or GM or medical staff is going to approve that. Just like, you know, you know, the Seahawks did beat him in the playoffs that one time, and he was a Lion, so we should probably let him play. I don't think he will. I think Baker's still got some Baker juice in him, uh, and the Seahawks are mediocre. I think 12.5 points is a lot to cover. I'm so scared, though, picking it. I want to keep changing my answer, but it's the only game that is – Lighting a little bit of a fire deep down inside of my loins. So I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to take it. Give me a touchdown score. Nar. I think Nar had something on the Rams. Yes. Even if Stafford doesn't play. Fine. Makes sense. Probably what's going to end up happening. You're still in that locker room. You're still in that facility every single day this week. You don't think he's doing everything in his goddamn power to help Baker Mayfield prepare in the best way possible? Stafford knows how. I'm taking him plus 12 and a half. You don't have to convince me. No, I'm not convincing you. I'm talking to Train. Even if Stafford doesn't play, he's going to fucking help that team. Uh, and they don't have anything to play for because they don't have their pick. So or but, but they don't have Baker's... anything to lose for. So why why tank? And Baker's got the swag. He's still Baker's got that bacon. Of, he's incapable of losing on purpose. All right, I got my I got my touchdown score. Do it, Danny Dims. Put it on the board. He's running one in. <laughs> Wait, is he playing? Yeah, he'll play. <laughs> well, they don't have anything to he play will. for. He will play. I don't know. Fuck. They have nothing to play for, Bach. Well, I, you, ball can, coach of the year. <laughs> you can do a. This uh, is so scary, dude. That. No, 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 no. Danny Dims, put on put on the card. Yeah. What if he doesn't play? Doesn't matter. He'll score. <laughs> give us your backup. All right. Now. If Danny Dims doesn't play, give me blah, blah, blah. 
Najee Harris. Fuck, Bach. God damn it. All right. Blah, blah, blah. Give me Firemuth. Fuck. What? Uh, that's too many points for the Steelers to score. You take Najee. I'll get somebody else. All right. Danny Dim's primary. Najee Harris secondary. But... I think you're going to love this, Bach. Uh, it look... might make things juicy. <sighs> I'm scared because I think I know who you're going to say. Can I guess it? Can I guess it? Yeah, I, I think you might have kind of saw me say it. No, I didn't. I wasn't looking at you. What What do you? What is it? Zay Jones. Evan Ingram. Oh, that's all I got. I don't have more guesses. Trevor Lawrence. Oh, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. Oh, my. Yeah, it's been a yeah. Oh, Trevor it's Lawrence. Be you know what? I, I just it. knew you were a big Zay Jones guy, so. We're doing quarterbacks? I'll do a quarterback. Oh, three quarterback TD parlay to end, well, end the regular season. Um, Jalen playing this week? I'm not risking that. I know minus fourteen is just so much, dude. So many points. So many points. Mm, I wanted plus twenty so bad, dude. There's no way the Giants lose by twenty. Probably not. This is going to be juicy. Yeah, it's going to nice. be juicy. Desmond Ritter. Wow. Really? Fox team has nothing to play for. Like a sneak or like a 10 yard, 80 yard? 30. 30. 30. 30. Holy 32. shit. 32. 32 yard touchdown by Desmond Ritter. <laughs> I think Trav's going to be on like the two yard line and running up. On the sideline, almost and just stiff arm like dive like a bootleg. Yeah, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be wide open. It's a big. It's gonna be like that one Peyton Manning play in Denver. Six yeah. foot six. He's a big QB sneak guy. If they get really close. Yeah, I, I'm confident. I think that's gonna be our juiciest play this year. Uh, if you do parlay it, but I don't. Desmond I'm Ritter, probably. Trevor Lawrence, Danny Dims, backup Najee. Do I need to pick a quarterback backup? Yeah, you probably should. Fuck. No. <laughs> yes. It was always Kenny always Pickett. Sneaking. He's always sneaking. It was always that's Kenny a, Pickett. That's a great play. Danny Dams. Danny Dams. Kenny Pickett back up. Desmond Ritter. Trevor Lawrence. Holy shit. Yep. And for the teaser, we got the Chiefs down to one and a half. The Cowboys down to half plus half, and the Rams at plus 12 and a half. Yeah? And, and, and one more thing. What's that, Nar? This is Kim Jong-un locking, launching a nuclear missile. Oh, no. With with a fucking whale attached to it. The money in the bank. I'm not, I'm not having a bigger bet ever in my entire 2023. It's starting three days in to the year. It's going to be the biggest play I've had in my entire sports betting career. The Pittsburgh Steelers are not losing this fucking game. They're going to beat the shit out of those scumbag Browns, which they need revenge for because they got beat the shit out of earlier in the year. Kenny Pickett's a motherfucking dog. They have everything to play for because the rest of the games are going on at the same time. They're not going to be scoreboard watching because Mike Tomlin knows better at that. I would keep them f over 500, too. And it's Mike Talman over 500. They're not losing. If anything, it's a tie. Sprinkle a tie or minus three. Whale. Uh, so Nuclear the, is this missile. a money in the bank, I'm guessing? Yeah, times 100. Mon money in the bank, money line. If this bet doesn't hit. You want the money line or the spread? Spread. What? Minus two and a half. Two, two and, and a half. half? Okay, I got it two three here, but we'll take it two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half, we'll even it. if it's alternate. Money in the bank on the Steelers. That's all the time we have for the week. Sorry for being over. This is what happens when we don't have an outline. Thanks for <laughs> listening. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment below. Your favorite for Coach of the Year. If you're on Spotify, drop the like. Give us a rating. And don't forget, as always, fist it. Oh, dude, that took a lot.